residential dwelling. At the same time, the school department uh, annual assessment for every 10 students, faculty, and staff was not reduced. Uh, this motion to reduce it to $318 for an annual fee for every 10 students, faculty, and staff would bring the school department's sewer fee into conformance with the minimum rate that is charged for residential units in the community. Thank you. So Councillor Groff. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor? Oops. <laughs> All those in favor? All those opposed? 7 0. Item number 198. Proposed elimination of the alarm monitoring fee. Mr. McGovern? It's the budget you just adopted uh, has uh, less revenue in it than the, current, than the previous year for police fines and fees. Uh, that is because it was proposed in the budget to eliminate the annual $25 alarm service monitoring fee. Uh, the town has received dozens and dozens of complaints about this fee from citizens. They've been very unhappy with it. They very much support the police department in responding to calls, but they can't see in uh, paying this monitoring fee since they also have to pay, pay a fee to the monitoring company. So in response to the many complaints, uh, the staff has recommended that you eliminate this fee. Thank you. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilor McGinty? I'm opposed to eliminating this fee. Um, you know, maybe this is one of the reasons we find ourselves in the budget constraints we do now. Um, this is generally private alarm companies um, that citizens have alarms put into their, their homes. Um, it, this is not an unusual fee, maybe, uh, I almost called him counselor, town manager uh, McGovern um, could enlighten us as to whether other various communities around the greater Portland area have this fee. Um, and it certainly, um, because about 99% of the responses to these alarms are false, it does cause an extra workload on our officers. Certainly they're there to respond to um, calls for service. Um, but I think that if a person wants to put in an alarm system and have the police department respond, then why should the rest of the town bear the cost of that? And $25, uh, I keep hearing how affluent a town we are, um, $25 isn't that much. And, um, I think that we should keep the fee. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor Groff? Can I ask what the uh, impact on revenue in total is if, in fact, uh, we reduce or we did away with this fee? It's approximately $6,000. Thank you. Councilor Linnell? Could I uh, just get a refresher on what we, uh, what, what people get? In, uh, for this fee? We don't actually do any monitoring of alarms. That is all done by the private alarm companies. This just recognizes that perhaps they might, when the alarm company calls, when the alarm goes into the alarm company, the alarm company itself does not respond to the call. So really the, the alarm is, is useless, or practically useless, except for if it's an audible and it's heard in the neighborhood, that may, may be a deterrent to crime. Uh, you know, unless you have the police department respond, uh, what good does it do? So the sense was the, the, the department, uh, the alarm company calls the uh, police department and they respond and that, that's the most important part of the service. I've explained that a good 10 times a year and uh, I, I've convinced myself more than I have the individual residents uh, <laughs> uh, that, that that argument makes a lot of sense. It, you know, I, I do believe that you know, the police are the most important part, but, you know, everyone says we pay taxes for that anyway. Uh, and, uh, you know, do you charge a fee when you respond when a neighbor calls and says, I, th I think something's going on at the resident next door? No. Well, you're discriminating on me sim simply because I have an alarm fee. I have an alarm. And, you know, we, 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 the discussions go on from there. Thank you. Councilor McGinty. Could you answer my question? Do, is this a typical alarm fee in most towns and cities or some or whatever. No, no counselor but it is typical to have a a false alarm fee uh, in our uh, in our alarm systems ordinance which allows this type of fee but doesn't require it we do provide that after three false alarms is a $25 fee per alarm so that those that pay the alarm still pay that I, I would like to say that for those that are initially installing their alarms we, we do have a little more leniency than those who who accidentally are setting off their alarms all the time Sometimes when new alarms go in, you know, to no fault of the people, uh, the company just hasn't set them up right, and we try to work with them. Councilor McGinty? 
Um, doesn't this also cause the alarm owner um, to register the alarm, though, so that whether the, the police department or the fire department um, are responding, um, that they have contact people, they know where to find residents who may not be home. Um, I know the fire department loves to chop down doors and things, but um, gives us a little better opportunity to contact a neighbor who may have a key or something like that. In discussions with individuals about this, what, what, I've, I've tried all those things, John. What they've told me is the alarm, system, the alarm company has all that information anyway, and, and, and I don't want the police having it. Someone could get a hold of it under the right to know law, and it's, not a, it's no one's damn business. And, okay, that's, You're quoting, of course. I'm quoting, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had some quite the conversations I, on this over the time. I understand. I, Councilor, I understand where you're coming from. Okay. Uh, Councilor Jordan. Okay. No. Yeah, but no, we, I know they monitor some of them, but they get a call in from the line company and to respond to, and if somebody is on vacation or somebody's in Florida, for one, they like to have them, so I would think it would be worth $25 to any landowner to have that alarm and have it monitor while they was away. Councillor Reed, I just had a clarification. The budget that we just uh, voted 5-2 to, to accept did not include the $6,000 revenue for this. Is that correct? That's correct, Councillor. And um, just doing the math real quickly, this only impacts a small number of uh, homes in, or is this businesses as well? We're only talking about the, the fee for residences, right? No, all, all of the alarm monitoring fee for both businesses as well as companies. And this is atypical in the area to have this fee? We're the only community that I'm aware of that has this specific fee. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? All those in favor of the motion to eliminate the fee? All those opposed? Five to two, McGinty, Jordan. You had that revenue you reduce the taxes a few cents. Item number 199, consideration of finance committee recommendation to withdraw from the Greater Portland Council of Governments. Mr. McGovern, Mr. McGinty, somebody? You want me to do it, John? Go ahead. Yeah, the finance committee uh, expressed some concerns as to how effectively the Greater Portland Council of Governments is currently serving the community. Uh, the council had, a, I think, a very good workshop this past week with, with the president of the Greater Portland Council of Governments as well as with a couple of staff members. Uh, the way they, this process works, that if the town were to withdraw, we would, you would need to give one year's notice. So by voting this particular motion this evening of notice of intent to withdraw, you would still, excuse me, revisit it during next year's budget process and determine if, in fact, you want to carry out uh, that particular action. Uh, from a personal viewpoint, COG uh, has provided a tremendous amount of services over the years. Uh, we do save a, a, a good sum in bid fees in, uh, through their cooperative bidding process. Uh, I think the mapping that, you know, that, that was produced here this evening from, from COG shows the benefit. But at, but at the same time, I think COG also, uh, in many respects, has lost contact with its customers. And uh, I think it's a real close call as to whether or not you, you give notice of intent to withdraw. Quite frankly, I would hate to see capitalism withdraw. I think Councillor Cogswell's comments earlier about dealing regionally is, is very positive, but you know, sometimes these re regional organizations need to get a message that, uh, that they do have customers and the customers pay uh, $10,000 to $12,000, in our case, in annual dues, and uh, we're looking for some improvements. So I, think, I, I would hate to see you eventually vote, vote to withdraw. If you pass this tonight, I would trust that they would get the message. But I, I leave it to your own judgment this evening as to whether or not, with the action already taken, you, want, you desire to give them this strong notice that you actually do intend to withdraw. I, I think it's a close call. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Councilor McGinty. Uh, resolved the Capitalism Town Council does hereby give notice of the intent to withdraw from the Greater Portland Council of Governments effective June 30th, 1998. The issue is to be reconsidered one year from now during the budget process for fiscal year 1999. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Council Linnell. 
I guess, uh, I, I think when we uh, ultimately do the math, it uh, would prove to be in our favor to s stay with us. So, uh, but I, I do think it's important to send them a message. So I think we would uh, protect ourselves by giving notice of intent, but I, I hope that they uh, review uh, the, their relationship with the communities, and I sincerely hope that we uh, uh, stay with the the COG event uh, ultimately a year from now. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilman McGinty? Um, I also think it's important to send the message. Um, and I, I was impressed the meeting we had, uh, Sally, Tim, and, and the other people from COG who came over and talked to us. Um, when you start crunching the numbers, if it's more beneficial fiscally for us to stay, uh, I think we need to do that. But I would like to send the message also to, and as it says, review this for fiscal year. 99. Thank you. Councillor Reid. Um, I just wanted to ask, there's a two-year advance warning. One year. W one year, but uh, that's right. I'm thinking the budget cycles I had. Um, do we have any additional costs uh, if we decide to say, well, sorry, we were just trying to scare you. we only kidding. You know, we're staying. No, we don't. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I'm going to be voting against the motion. That is my reminder to next year's council that I hope you will reconsider. I'm, I'm assuming the motion is going to pass. That's my reminder to next year's council. I hope you will reconsider um, staying with the Greater Portland Council of Governments at that time. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? 6 1 McLaughlin. Item number 200. The appointment of Deborah Lane as acting town manager from May 7th, 1997 to June 3rd, 1997. Do you want to say anything about this, Ms. Lane? <laughs> Good luck to me. Councilor Cox. I'll second the motion. I was going to make a complete motion because there's more to it than Please just do. the states. Resolve the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby appoint Deborah Lane to serve as acting town manager from May 7, 1997 to June 3rd, 1997 with all the responsibilities of the said office. Ms. Lane shall also serve as acting town manager at such other times as the town manager may be on vacation or otherwise unavailable. Second. Comment. Councilman Reed. I just had a question. Since Michael's going to go through seven time zones and miss a day and gain a day, um, does that end date uh, coincide with his return to work or his supposed return to the continent? His <laughs> supposed return to work. Okay, so there's the lag times there. Supposed, that makes me nervous. You might like it down under. I'm giving you people all the leeway I can. <laughs> Anticipated. Any further comment? All those in favor of the motion? Seven to zero, unanimous. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Item number 201 is proposed expansion of the pool committee to seven at-large members. I asked for this item to be on the agenda when I was reviewing what I had recalled as one of my um, responsibilities to appoint a, a council member to the pool building committee. I went through the charge and said, whoops, uh, we appoint, we're supposed to appoint four citizens. We've already appointed seven. I did speak with the chairman of the school board, and she and I were both on the same wavelength that we were going to wait until after tomorrow's elections to see who we were um, choosing to appoint from the council and the school board. And we will also jointly appoint a member of the Community Services Advisory Commission. What I'm looking for this evening is concurrence from the council that we provide, that we make this a 10-member committee and that 10 members include seven citizens appointed that we appointed at our April 14th meeting. My understanding from the appointments committee was that there were a vast number of citizens, I think double the number you were um, recommended for appointment who applied for that position. So I think it's very timely and in keeping to um, have all seven of those members on there. I would entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
All those opposed? 7-0. Thank you. <coughs> Item number 202, the renewal of lease of the service station property. Mr. McGovern? Yes, the property, the <coughs> former gas station next door to the town hall has been leased on a year-by-year -year basis to Stephen M. Murray, who runs a small business there called Fabrications Unlimited. Uh, we do renew it on a one-year basis because of the town looking at longer-term future options for the building. Furthermore, the lease does provide uh, that we could terminate it with a 90-day notice. So if the community had any other need, certainly town government would not move faster than 90 days in changing its proposed use. Uh, so I would encourage you to authorize the lease and uh, so that we continue to work with Mr. Murray and gain some revenue from the property. And my understanding is that the lease um, document presented to the council would be updated and all the 1996 dates would be changed to 1997. All of the or appropriate dates. All the appropriate dates, let me put it that way. Right. This was the draft. Mm -hmm. 97 to 98. Council McGinty. I move that the town manager is hereby authorized to offer Stephen M. Murray a one year renewal of the lease of 314 Ocean House Road on the same terms as the current lease. I'll second it. Thank you. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? 7 0. Item number 203 is going to be a consideration to enter into executive session. Prior to that, we will have an opportunity for any citizens who are in the audience who wish to discuss items that were not on this evening's agenda to do so. If there's anybody who would like to do that, would you please come forward? So they go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Which way are you going to go? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, I would entertain a... A motion to go into executive session. If there is to be any vote, which I am not expecting, that would be done when the council comes back into full session. So I, I do anticipate a vote on, on, an, on an item, uh, a minor item, but I do anticipate a vote. Is it something we should have the television cameras? Wait. No, it's very minor. All right. Um, if anybody's interested in that vote, would you please contact the manager's office or the clerk's office in the morning? I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. It's stated here. So moved. Would you read it, please? You have to read it. Uh, we enter executive session to discuss land acquisition disposition matters. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? 7-0. The time is 9.50. Thank you. Thank you, folks. I might say something.